Welcome everyone to my Lorcana deck profile of A Long Came a Fairy, a Cinderella and Fairy Godmother inspired deck. Let's get to it. This is the deck here. We are trying to establish a board with Fairy Godmother and Cinderella and make use of their abilities that they have with each other and trying to uh, basically recycle all of our uh, characters that have been attacking this turn into other characters uh, and possibly being uh, banished, which would in turn let you have the characters back to your hand with our shifted fairy godmother. You are going to start off with any of the one cost drop characters just to start putting pressure on board and then uh, slowly you build up into your shift characters, all while using up your uh, kill actions uh, to take care of your opponent's board. You are just trying to establish a board and, and take control while your blue fairy is your draw engine uh, and your whole new world. You are trying to, tr to get out uh, all your shift targets as much as possible uh, and make it so that if you are in a tight spot, you can use the vitamin package to recycle those characters back to your hand and use them again. Uh, the items uh, in the deck, which are only to you, uh, the spell book is just some more pressure for lore on board uh, while you're playing. Uh, I do really like this deck. I like how it synergizes well with each other, and I'm going to be starting to do these new themed based decks and see how well they can play. Uh, these are some of the highlights of some of the best uh, games I have found with this deck. Uh, it is changeable, and you can definitely put in other cards uh, like friends on the other side, or uh, some other more mim package uh, related stuff by keeping the same core. It's your choice, but I do like how the deck is and how it's running. Let's get to some gameplay, shall we? And we shall see how well uh, you like the deck. And let's start this off. Here's uh, our first game. We are trying to establish a board uh, and have presence. I do not need to mulligan my hand away uh, because I have turn one, turn two, and so forth plays. Uh, I am waiting for my opponent to uh, show me what they're going to be using. Now with the new update for uh, Pixel Board, you, you're being told what colors your opponent's playing, which doesn't really happen in real life right away. Uh, if you are an uh, experienced player, you'll only reveal one of your colors right away so your opponent doesn't know what the other color you are playing. And uh, here we establish the Cinderella and the Captain Hook. We're trying to make it so that there's some pressure on and make it so that my opponent doesn't want to quest uh, or is trying to force me into questing. Uh, they don't realize that I don't really care for my low end cost cards, so I will start training them to them as much as possible. And you can see that here, they're trying to build up a big engine and go for my very threatening Captain Hook. Um, uh, here we're doing our uh, actions to start uh, taking care of our opponent while we uh, continue to quest and continue going. I am just trying to set up a uh, big hand so that I can stop dro start dropping Tink and possibly even the Spellbook and getting more lore that way. Uh, my opponent just decides to keep going for more ink and more ink and uh, isn't really putting too much pressure on me. So here I start just playing my own game while I'm waiting for them to make some big moves. Their hand's pretty small. They are constantly adding more stuff to their to their ink uh, so that they can keep playing cards for later on turns, I guess. Uh, but here I just want to clean up the board and use my uh, tink to take care of both the Mickeys and then continue questing and then uh, pretty much not care what my opponent does at that point. Uh, pass, I'm going to need ink because I'm in a good spot. Uh, you don't necessarily need to ink every turn, but it is recommended uh, to do that as much as you can. They do the whole Hades combo there. Uh, and again, I do another kill action just to kill off one of the uh, Hades and then continue on the play. Uh, I now established a uh, book and putting on pressure right away uh, to them. They have a lot of ink, so uh, I don't know why they decided to trade into my Mim. Uh, dropping two of the the queens is a 
really cool call. Uh, but I have a board wipe anyway. I can sing with. I can bring out a. Uh, I ran a mim, and then I decided to put my Tinkerbell back to my hand so I can reuse her again, uh, and then make it so that my opponent won't get off any uh, particular cards from the uh, Queen to trade into. And I just drop the Tink again, uh, put more damage on board, and just start questing from here since they don't have anything uh, in a rested state. I continue to play here until uh, we are established and then they drop a Alice. Uh, now I know that there's some uh, time limit on my field because there is a definitely a support uh, issue uh, thing going on here where they can take care of all my guys if I don't have anything and when I know I draw a card that will take care of most of their field, continue the quest. Uh, it's out of hand for them now, they can't do much and I continue to keep questing and they drop another Haze. Uh, this time it's the big one. Uh, the shift one. Uh, that one is a problem. I don't want to keep it, have him keep, uh, stay on board. I decided to use the T uh, and trade into it, do two damage, just to get some more like ping damage off on the Haze um, and get some forced, uh, force him to attack into my Tinkerbell because now he is pretty much stuck. Uh, I, my Olaf will go out and trade into that. I can bring out my Queen or my, uh, my Cinderella and that's game. And we're gone on to the next game here. We have uh, a really weird hand. Uh, a lot of like turn ones, uh, but not anything to follow up with until I uh, draw more uh, like turn two plays. I might as well just start inking the Cinderella and start playing some one cost out. We uh, end up just sitting there inking for quite a while to uh, to go into like mostly a mirror field here with uh, a Captain Hook on their side, Captain two Captain Hooks on my side, as well as uh, Olaf. Uh, we're just both building our uh, <coughs> our, Cap our Captain Hooks and then having a whole little pirate off. Let's get off right now. Uh, waiting for who's gonna do what first. The person decides to uh, ink more and uh, mirror the field. Uh, I I'm starting to uh, just do some uh, killing kill cards just to like clean up the the, the field and to start trading into these cotton hooks before they become a problem. There, I decide not to uh, quest since I don't want to deal with the captain hook taking care of either of my characters. They are on steel too, so I don't know when their kill cards are going to come in and start getting rid of my cards. So I'm uh, waiting for them to uh, quest with the captain hook. I gladly trade that Captain Hook into their characters just to get rid of the other Captain Hook, but I do have a um, Madame Mim in my hand, which could make it so that I don't have to lose my hook. Uh, and I decided to just take care of the hook and not quest this turn, putting more pressure on their board with me having more characters while I'm, while I'm trying to do the fairy godmother play it's what i'm trying to build up here in my hand and uh they want the ink for some reason they don't have a big hand at all so taking advantage of that i just keep uh dropping characters and questing uh and now they're top decking so we're at the point where they have to do something or else they're going to lose they have a mirror that they can't really um waste too much ink into uh, they'll start doing some drawing, uh, but it does take up a lot of uh, ink just to be able to do the draw. I dropped the shifted uh, just shifted godmother, and I start questing from there. Uh, and they drop their draw engine. Uh, they're, are, they're a scary beast. I don't want that happening, uh, having any draws off, so I start doing ping damage on it at the risk of getting uh, losing any character on my side of the field. I will quest with my with like a fair guy weather making all my guys attacks uh, plus three on challenging and if they die they go back to my hand instead of uh, being bashed. Uh, they have, have a strong beast and instead of attacking first they do the song. I choose my already hurt uh, Captain Hook and they fire the cans on the other one. I'm totally okay with that as long as I can keep my cinder, my, uh, my godmother on board. And then I drop the Cinderella and uh, we back, we're back to the theme of the deck, Cinderella and Fairy Godfather. Uh, 
wait for the uh, wait for the, the clock to strike twelve because we are going to be tr trying to shift Terra as much as we can. Uh, and I don't know if we'll actually be able to before we actually win the game. Uh, we have a cool board wipe on our side of the field, and they have just a uh, We'll see what their two draws get from, and we get a ping off on the beast. Uh, we are going to have our Cinderella get taken out, and that's unfortunate, and they shift into a beast, which I haven't seen two people do that. I have my fairy godmother sing, uh, grab your swords, drop another Cinderella, the big one, and then I proceed to let them go. I will now lose, most likely, one of my uh, my very fairy godmother uh, to their beast. Uh, but they decide to sing and get rid of my my Cinderella. They don't want me to win with that. I'm happy with not getting that off. And I do a draw with their, their mirror, and I quest winning the game here. And to style points, I use the book to get my points. And the last game of my video this is one of the ones i get the strangest hands with with a lot of the uh, blue fairies uh the blue fairies will let you draw any card uh, a card when you play a shifted character so knowing that i want to power them out as fast as possible since there is two and that's a lot of drawing power i start throwing my uh, ink into the ink well and start dropping one cost so i can do the board presence until i get my my, fairy, my fairies out, my blue fairies, and then we wait for this for them to start going on. I uh, throw more Tinkerbells away since I don't really need them right now, and here we go, we're starting to get set up for our drawing. They are not uh, happy that about the blue fairy coming out, and now that they dropped a uh, mini mouse, it's very hard to do my free chow, uh, questing with those blue fairies without possibly losing them. Uh, they, on the other hand, can catch up to my lore advantage really fast with that mini mouse. And I do not wish to trade in both of my my fairies just to be rid of that, that mini mouse. And they do teach an ambition on the mouse to kill one. Uh, yeah, they really don't want me drawing uh, any, any at all. So I, just, I get a Tinkerbell and I change my focus to start putting that on the field. Uh, knowing that they are a red deck, I am watching their ink because once they hit the six, the seven, the seven ink, or are going to hit seven ink, you need to pull back on playing characters because every single time that a, a red deck has, or a ruby deck has uh, six ink, the next turn it will 100% be, um, be prepared. So always pull back when you can. For that, that's my little tip for uh, Ruby. Uh, here, we just want to quest for more and decide to quest because if they want to lose their mini, they can trade into my my draw engine and they drop a, a Rapunzel, which sucks for me because now I my whole strategy for that blue fairy is out the window and my draw engine is now gone. I should have not done that, which I do recommend when you have the fairy, uh, blue fairy out and not quest with it unless you're fully safe. Uh, it's the same thing with book. Uh, unless you know you're not going to lose it, don't quest with it. Uh, I am pretty much trying to get as much advantage as possible here for lore, and here comes the Dragon Fire. Very, very uh, unfortunate for me that I lost one of my uh, key cards there for that, and I just decided to quest, quest, and then uh, do a Madden to bring back the the uh, Tinkerbell back to my hand so I can do more ping damage to the whole field. Uh, I see that they're going to drop a Donald Duck here and uh, just play as much cards from their hand because they need to uh, drop a lot right now to catch up. Uh, and I have to decide if I want to trade into that uh, Donald Duck if I want to do ping damage to the whole board uh, and possibly kill everything or do something else. I decide that maybe it's worth it to just uh, play the Tinkerbells instead to get rid of more of their characters. And then I'll just have to quest for three and then I will win. Uh, they know this and then they concede. And that's it. I think you, that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you like more, uh, please subscribe and we'll see you soon. Bye.